Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Ray Williams concludes his testimony. Our musical guest is Suzanne de Groot, and Reverend Mabley's sermon is titled, Intimate Fellowship with God. Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Ray Williams. Welcome once again to Testimony Time on Eternally Yours Telecast. These last few weeks, uh, we have had this wonderful anointed encourager on the telecast who's greatly encouraged me. So if you need encouragement, which we all do, listen up to his wonderful words that he has to say. And I welcome once again, Raymond Winston Williams. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, this may surprise you, but the first time I've come to this part of the coast. Oh, where are you I've from? I've never been to BC before. Oh, welcome I to almost BC. never take any holidays. I, you know, I work 11 years at a stretch before taking a bit of a break. And uh, that's why this, I believe, is of God. Because if his servant sitting over there would have said, you just must come out here. And there's all kinds of reasons why I could have refused, but I just felt, this is it. Be obedient. Go. And... Um, because he's like an older prophet to me, really. You're because speaking of Artie Bryant, the founder Arnie of Bryant, Prayer yes, Canada. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I feel I should share this particular part of my testimony as to how I came across his path, he came across my path. Can you imagine a minister, I'm picturing the whole thing very clearly right now, a minister of the gospel asked me to fly into Ottawa. At the time, I didn't have the company aircraft. Um, but I had access to a little two-seater. It was October that year, the Friday afternoon, when I was down at the stock exchange in the new location. I had several contracts with them, and this new build building was fairly high. I was looking over the city, and I saw some scattered snow showers. Decided to call the um, weather office, and it was whilst I was on the phone that, even though the weather didn't seem that bad, just got a snow shower. I just had this feeling, drop everything. But why? I really like flying. I don't say I love flying. I love God. Mm -hmm. I like flying. Mm -hmm. All my life. So I turned down this flight. Anyway, by the time I got home that evening, my wife said, there's this uh, Dr. Paul Vaughan who, who called and said that these two men, men from British Columbia that uh, at a hotel down on Jarvis Street. I said, Jarvis Street? Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, my chapter's having a, meet, a breakfast meeting next morning. Should invite them. So that's what I, I called, introduced myself, invited them to the meeting, and went down Java Street, picked them up, brought them to the Holiday Inn, introduced them to the chapter president, who was president at that time, and without hesitation, he looked at Arnie and said, Would you mind praying? And to Chuck, his partner, would you mind sharing? And I, I still remember the main speaker, Len Stevens, at that time. Uh, he cut his testimony short for some reason. I don't think he was warned about Arnie. But Arnie came up, surveyed this crowd in front of him, about five or six hundred people, and broke down and cried. And I thought, well, what upset him? <laughs> but the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and I, I was able to see into his heart and he was able to share with these people so marvelously that God spoke to me so clearly and said, drop everything and stay with this man. Hmm. So he didn't know where I was from, knew nothing about my background. Because when the meeting was over, he said, oh, you're from South Africa, aren't you? He said, well, we having a Dr. Conrad. He was on his way to BC and he, when he heard I was here, he turned his flight around. I think he went as far as Lesbridge. And, uh, oh my goodness, this is the reason why I must stay with these men. Well, uh, we went to the airport. I was getting so hungry, I went to buy a chocolate bar. Arnie and Chuck went looking for this Dr. Conradi. By the time it came out, there three of them walking up toward me. They didn't know what he looked like, neither did I. Well, met Dr. Conradi. We ended up on the Humpty Street going to visit them. We weren't on the program. But uh, we had some wonderful things happen down there a few years later. Anyway, um, 
I think I should go rapidly to the end of that particular week because something <laughs> marvelous happened. Two marvelous things happened. Chuck Gisbrook left a bit early. I stayed with Arnie. It was a Friday night. Took him to the airport and um, shared with him a little bit. And finally, time came, said goodbye. So he hugged me, walked away. Oh, he shook hands and he walked away. He, he walked about five or six paces, put his case down, turned around. I know the experience of this before. There must have been about almost 200 people mulling around. And there's this tall fellow putting his hands up in the air saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, put your mantle upon him now. Never had any of this happen before. I felt difficult to describe. Energy, electricity, whatever, go mm. right through my body into the floor. The Holy Spirit. Gave me a quick hug, walked away, picked up his case, and off he went. Mm. I stood there staring at him. And I came to my senses, I turned around, went to the elevator, pushed the button, went up to the second floor, got in my station wagon, put the key in the ignition, Pulled it out. It was getting a little chilly. I didn't have an overcoat at the time, at the end of October that year. I went to the wall and I looked over. I thought, yeah, it must be that aircraft, uh, DC-10 CP air flight. Yeah, uh, sure was that one. So I started praying for the safety of the aircraft and for Arnie. Well, I had a strange feeling somebody sat next to me as I was praying for the aircraft. I looked and there was this woman in her late 40s, early 50s, I mean, the parking lot's almost deserted. This woman walked up to me. Is she not scared? The moment I looked at her, German, got two children aboard the aircraft. She has a thumb on the head of her husband. And the Christian, nevertheless, but she wants to control all these things. She opens her mouth and said, Sir, is that airplane going to Vancouver? German. I said, yes, my dear. I, what kind of airplane is it? I said, a DC-10, my dear. Oh, it's safe for us crashing in Dallas, Texas. I said, my dear, don't worry about it. I'm a pilot and I've got the report of his baggage door problems and the, the AD has been sent out to all the airlines. I said, don't worry about it. And by the way, if your husband decides to watch television, leave him alone. And those children on there, they only mean... <laughs> and the words just came out of me. And the, the woman froze. And I could hear the words of the Lord say, pray for her. And I'm about to hold her hand. No, put your hand on the shoulder. I had another specific leading like that at one time, which was quite exciting, a high-level government official. And um, <laughs> prayed for her. And this woman said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. Your life is amazing. That was my encounter with Arnie and Prayer Canada, the first of many marvelous things, really. Tell me about this blessing that's happening even today uh, in, in the year 2012. Arnie Bryan, the founder of Prayer Canada, him and his wife Kathy, him 94 and her, I'm sure in her 80s, and still going strong for Jesus shows the faithfulness of God and you being a faithful supporter for 30 years. And two weeks. And two weeks, <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing. <laughs> Tell me though, he is now celebrating his what, 35th? You, 35th years, and the guest speaker is you. <laughs> so <laughs> I just you, think you're going you, to do you. absolutely marvelous, 35th year. If you ever want to have Arnie uh, Bryan's testimony, we have that on DVD. I mean, yeah. it's amazing what he's doing through Arnie and through you. Yes, I feel quite honored. You hear God. Yeah, uh, One of the greatest gifts we could give anyone is help them hear God. Yeah. And it's a joy to know you. You hear God. I would like to ask you to pray for me in this telecast ministry coming to a close. And I pray you viewers will agree because I really believe that you have a powerful prayer ministry as well as an encouraging ministry. So please, coming to a close, would you say a prayer? Amen, amen, amen. Dear Father, Father of my Lord and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I thank you for this opportunity. 
I thank you for the testimony you've given me. I thank you for having led and guided me towards this particular ministry, for which I bless and I ask you to bless in Jesus' precious name. For all those within earshot of the television set, watching or listening to this program, I pray your hand of mercy stretch out towards them to reveal your truth unto them, that their spiritual eyes and ears be opened. But Lord, I would not be remiss to not pray for your covenant people, the descendants of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and also for the peace of Jerusalem, for which we pray that it would never be divided, that your hand be upon them, that they be a mighty, mighty, mighty influx of souls as a result of your anointed ministers that you will send out into that field which is white under harvest. But Lord, this being our country, I pray, of Canada, that truly you would raise up many, that we have a mighty harvest within this nation. For we stand in the gap and ask you to forgive this nation for all the abominations that have taken place and that there be in these end times a mighty harvest. Pray your blessing upon this ministry, dear Father, that they prosper and grow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the vision given, dear Father, to the leader of this ministry, Aubrey, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, I, I perceive your anointing right now, and I ask you to increase that upon my life and dear Raymond's life, God, and upon the life of the viewers, Lord. God of hope, fill us with all peace and joy and believing we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, I know you come from my words and my brother's words. I thank you for that, almighty God. Oh, Father God, your spirit bear witness with all our spirits that you have a great call for every one of our lives. And my burden and my heart has always been from Canada for day one. I thank you for the revival that will flow across this nation from the west to the east like a prairie fire. Fanny into flames is today in agreement with my dear brother and, and his wonderful mentor, Arnie Bryan, the senior saint that's celebrating 35th year this day. And I just want to say thank you, almighty God. We thank you. We hear and know your voice and we obey it. And may the viewers do likewise. What a great, no greater joy than to know your will and do it, Father. Thank you, Abba, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Oh, I just feel the anointing. <laughs>
Thank you, Suzanne de Groot, for that wonderful anointed music. Suzanne comes uh, often at our Revival Healing Services, lives in uh, Hope, uh, British Columbia, and uh, she's very anointed. Thank you, Suzanne. And now sharing from my heart in Christ, a message I've entitled, An Intimate Fellowship with God. An intimate fellowship with our Creator. Christianity is a love relationship with our Creator, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ as Lord. He who died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead. For God so loves the world, you're part of it, that he gave. Love gives and it keeps on giving and giving and giving. And today he's going to give his word out of my mouth to help you and I have intimate fellowship with God. This is on my heart so much these, these last while. I want to know God. Those that know God will be strong and do exploits that please Him. Did you know you and I were created to please God? We were. And so here are some words that I put together. First of all, I have been reading this wonderful book by Andrew Murray about intimate fellowship with God. And ever since I read it, and this man of God that wrote in the 18th century. His books and his works have so blessed my life, my walk with God, and I just know that I know that I know that what he was writing about, he was experiencing in a great measure. And he said, if you will seek God in the morning hour, well, maybe you can't give an hour, maybe it's the morning half hour, maybe it's the morning 15 minutes, but that quiet devotional time, I call it devotional time, that quiet devotional time with God, I believe with all my heart, can secure God's presence, God's blessings, God being with you in a special way all the day through. Wouldn't you like that? I tell you the truth, after following my Lord Jesus for over 30 years, there's absolutely nothing more precious than His presence. And that's what I long to be in my life, and I pray it would be in your life. I pray through this short message, you'll be stirred up to have an intimate relationship with Holy Father through Christ the Lord. Amen? And the Word of God says very clearly, in uh, Psalm 5, verse 3, My voice shall you hear in the morning. Isn't that kind of clear direction from God? We need to seek Him in the morning, in the morning time when we first get up, and even in bed before we get out of bed. And that's where I often like to talk to God. Before my feet hit the floor, I like to talk to God about spending the day with Him, His presence, His strength, His blessings, His will. Hallelujah. Psalm 5, verse 3. My voice shall you hear in the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. Crystal clear directions. And the Lord also said in Psalm Isaiah 50 verse 4, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I will know how to speak a word in season. Wouldn't you like to know what to say properly? Because our tongues can get us in so much trouble. The Lord has given us a tongue of the learned that we should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He awakens us morning by morning. He awakens our ear to hear as the learned. So this book by Andrew Murray, Experiencing God Daily, he says, the daily need for a time of solitude and quiet to pray and read God's word is of utmost importance to bring a blessing of strength that will bring a blessing of fellowship with God, strength our spiritual life, strengthen it, and prepare us to meet the world. Then we'll be, we will be equipped for service for the King. We are King's children, men and women of God, and we are to serve the King, and it brings such joy to our hearts if we will do just that. And so I encourage you, we need to have fellowship with God, deep, deep relationship with God, sweet, intimate fellowship with God, where His presence will come down, His wisdom will enter the soul. Daily, I encourage you to give your life fresh to God, surrender all to God, that the Holy Spirit will envelop you, and His wisdom and strength will envelop you, and His presence. This is my heart's desire, 
and I'm trusting God, he's working by this telecast, I desire in your heart to do likewise. Because in these days, the people are so busy. They're so busy with computers and, and Facebook and, and life and family and children and events. Oh, beloved ones, in your busyness, don't forget the Creator, the one that can help you through your busyness, the one that can put things in order, the one that can bring quietness to your soul. And it's not only reading the Word of God. It's not only praying. It's not only praising God. They're all important. I do them regularly with great joy because I know that God loves it. And it helps me as I do that. But also just time sitting in His presence. It's like, here I am, Lord. Afresh today, infuse me with your love. Blessed Holy Spirit, come fill me. I'm here, I'm waiting for you, because I'll tell you the truth. Jesus Christ is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. I put some keys together, which you can ask my office by phoning in, and the prayer counselor will send them to you. Keys for a happy Christian life. Number one, believe, and I have scriptures for each one. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. Wants to live in your heart and your life by the Holy Spirit. Wants to have intimate fellowship with you. Oh, thank you, Jesus, you want that. Number two, stay close, draw near. Oh, regularly before I leave bed, I pray James 4, 7, and 8. Lord, I submit to you. Be sincere about that. Submit your whole life to him. Resist the devil and the evil that will try to come that day. Draw near to him. Stay close. He will draw near to you. Hallelujah. He will. And the third thing is, I have more scriptures than just that. The third one is obey God. Christianity is a love relationship with our creator. And we choose to obey him because obedience to Him pleases Him, and we feel good about ourselves, and we have His blessings on our lives when we obey Him. Sometimes when you think that God wants you to do something on the outside, it doesn't look like you could enjoy that, but I tell you the truth, once you say, okay, Lord, you surrender, you'll do it, you'll feel better about it. You'll feel better about life, and you have peace in your heart. Scripture says, seek peace and pursue it, amen? And the last one is work. Work for the Lord. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. R Romans 14, 17 to 19. For the kingdom of God is not just eating and drinking, folks, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God, approved of mankind. Let us therefore pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which we may, be, we may edify one another. So every single thing that Jesus Christ did was done by the power of the Holy Spirit. I can prove that by one powerful verse, and I'm sure it's elsewhere. Hebrews 9, verse 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, purge our conscience of dead works, and evil powers to serve God. Only the blood of Jesus takes away the stain of sin, folks. It's only through the blood of Jesus that we can approach God. But he says very clearly in Hebrews, he says, that God is able to save us to the uttermost, us who come to him through Jesus Christ, whoever lives to pray for us. You be sure and listen to more of this message next week. We need an intimate relationship with Father God. Amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. In appreciation of your gift of $20 or more, we are pleased to offer a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Sharing from my heart in Christ to your dear heart these last few minutes. Just a few words of encouragement. Wouldn't you like it to be if Satan tried to trouble you, he'd have to go through Jesus Christ and the holy blood of Jesus, which he can't. I want to be so hid in Christ 
I encourage you to want the same. And claim and pray Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 4. It says, if you are risen with Christ, then seek those things which are above in this intimate relationship with God. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, for we are dead, our lives are hid with Christ and Holy Father. And Christ, who is our lives, appear. Appear in our lives. And we appear with him in glory. God wants it to be that his glory, his presence, his love be in your life and mine. And so when you come and close for prayer in a few moments, I want to really encourage you to ask God for deeper fellowship, intimate relationship with him. Let's pray for that, okay? Oh, Father in heaven, I pray every viewer that your children and will be, that you would give them a longing to know your love and your sweet holy presence and a deeper intimate relationship with you, Lord, through Christ. And really seek you in the morning devotions. I pray that for them. I pray it for me. I know, Lord, you're waiting for us to do just that. And you'll meet us dearly in Jesus' holy name. We agree. Amen. Amen. Now I have a few things I'd like you to consider ordering to bless your life in Christ. One is this classic book, A Christian Secret of a Happy Life by Hannah Whitehall Smith. I have read this book over and over and over. It is so good. The chapters in it will so touch your heart. What to do about doubt, how to know God's will, God's side, our side. And this one here, The Christian Secret of a Happy Life. Absolutely awesome works of God for you to grow in. And also, if you order them, we will send you these DVDs all together how to have, about having, a deeper relationship with God. In the name of Jesus, amen.